Hi friends, welcome to Lisa Marvin Cooks. I don't know if you're interested in this, but I thought it'd be fun. My first passion has actu was actually cooking. And over the years I've kind of tried and tested so many recipes and have come up with my favorite ones that work uh, for my family. And they're usually super easy, but like for me and people I know, it's super delicious. Uh, so I figured I'd share, I don't know if anyone would be interested, but I'm going to make some cabbage borscht today. And I thought I'd take you along and see if you wanted to try it too. So let's cut up some veggies. Cut up um, half my cabbage. I'll show you what you're looking for. And again, you know what? You really don't have to be precise. Um, let's just finish cutting this guy. And then we will start. I love doing things that are one pot and easy. And luckily, Elliot loves soups and stews, as do I. So I thought this would be fun. Okay, so we have that put away. Okay, so normally you might want to cut these small, but Elliot loves big chunks of carrot. So I'm not going to cut them as small. But this is how we're going to cut them. And by the way, if you have trouble with knives, you want to hold your stuff like this so you don't cut yourself. And you want to use a kind of rocking motion back and forth to kind of go more smoothly for you. You also want to invest in some really good knives. This is um, Henkel, which is a really good company. Um, very heavy duty and nice. All right, I'm gonna put that by my cabbage. Now, since I'm lazy, mostly, I like to buy ready chopped onions. You don't have to, but it just kind of like makes my life easier, okay? Um, now, also to make my life easier, so traditional borscht is used with beets. Beets are so messy even for me. So if you don't even want to deal with the mess of beets or you can't get your hands on beets, don't even bother getting them. I got them already spiraled up and I'm going to just like sprinkle them in right into the pot so I don't have to deal with them. You want some potatoes. I just got these mini potatoes just so I don't have to, have to worry about them so much, but you can not really feel like peeling anything today but you can get any sort of white potato and peel them as well. Just kind of cut them in, well, the, the big ones I would cut into four. Smaller ones you can cut into half like this little guy, it's fine half. Okay, so to recap, we have our half a head of cabbage. Put my carrots right on top. We have the uh, onion. We have the beets. We have the patates. All right. Um, the other ingredients that we're going to be using is now not all borscht. Again, this isn't going to be traditional, um, but I like some beef in my borscht. So I got some beef cube. You can really use any beef that's available to you. We're going to be using some tomato paste to make it tomatoey. I have beef broth. Now you can use chicken stock or whatever you want, but I have beef, beef today. Now remember, this is all about like, it's not going to be bad whether you use chicken or beef, doesn't matter. It's really about um, using what you have and making it easy. Uh, another thing that makes my life easy <laughs> is already peeled um, garlic. Again, if you're not lazy like me, you can get whole heads of garlic. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually, these are like big chunks. I'm gonna cut these chunks into smaller chunks. I, don't know, I shouldn't use the word chunks. Smaller pieces, we're gonna heat it up, get it nice and brown. I'm gonna remove the meat, okay, once it's brown for a little bit. That's when I'm gonna add all my veggies to get nice and warm and relaxed and merry together, okay? Then I'm gonna add my tomato paste, make it really nice and tomatoey. Then I'm gonna add my stock, add the meat back in, add some spices, and like let it sit. And at the end, the thing that I love mo most about cabbage rolls is the bitter, 
not bitter, um, sour sweet. So that's when you add a bit of vinegar and a bit of sugar to your taste, and then it will have a delicious soup. So let's do it. I was just cutting the meat. I just want to give you a little tip. When you're cutting meat, and if you want to make it less chewy and nicer, cut it against the grain. So you can see the grain's going this way. So when I'm cutting my meat, I'm cutting it like an X to the grain like that. So it makes your pieces less chewy and more melty in the mouth. Okay, so I have my hot, my pan getting hot. I'm just finishing cutting up the pieces. Sneakers is waiting on the floor for all the things that I'm definitely gonna drop. That's why he loves cooking with me. And then I'm just gonna put like a tablespoon of oil and I don't mind if the meat sticks a little bit and you get those delicious brown bits because that's what's gonna make your soup ultra delicious. So for me, olive oil is really important and getting like a good quality olive oil is very important. So it might be something that you wanna invest in. They are more expensive, of course. Yeah, you wanna hear that nice sizzle? Okay. Now you don't wanna stir right away. It will not stick to itself when it's ready to move. You wanna season every stage. can turn it down a bit and we are going to add our cabbage it will melt down and we will add our onions we're going to melt that down a bit and then we will add um, the beef and the other stuff all right, I'm add some more. Okay, and keep working those down for a couple minutes. I'm going to add some tomato paste to the vegetables and cook that down even more. Pop it, and I'm also going to put my garlic in. I'm going to use about three cloves. If you want it even more tomatoey, which I might, uh, you might add a bit of tomato sauce. We'll see how tomatoey it looks when I pour in my liquid. And that's the thing, there's no, I mean, for baking, there's <laughs> rules or else, you know, you won't get perfect fluffy things. But for soups and stuff, soups are so easy and beginner friendly because you could really go with the flow and do whatever you want, really. Okay, so see how it's looking like good and translucent and it's worked it down a bit. So now let's put our... And you want this to get, uh, you want it cooking for a good minute or two. So I'm going to do like two, mm, three tablespoons, okay? At first to see. And if you coat this really nice, you can get your veggies all coated with it. And it will start to kind of caramelize. It'll be yummy. Okay, I'm going to add a bit of my thyme leaves. Um, I would add some bay leaves as well. I just don't have any left. The bay leaves are always good and just take them out before you eat. You can hear it, it's starting to sizzle and brown, which is good. It means all of the moisture has been removed and now this is where you start to get a really nice caramelized color. There we go. 
go. One. I think I'm gonna see what kind of tomatoes I got going on. If I have any crushed tomatoes. Let's see. I have diced tomatoes, not crushed, but that should work just fine. I'm gonna add them because I, I feel like more of a thick, thick situation today. Let's see. Yeah, see? It's gonna be really sticking to your ribs. You know what I mean? Let me add the meat in first. Okay. Add the patats. In. So let's bring this to a boil and then we will let it simmer for a couple hours and check back in on her. Found my bay leaves. So I'm going to put in, um, I'll put my camera down. I'll put in three. Oh, here we go. One, you get the picture. <laughs> Two. By the way, sometimes when you use the meat, you might want to skim a bit of this stuff that comes up. Hi guys. Um, Just you, you know, chilling. Welcome to say welcome to our first cooking video. Welcome to Lisa Malvin Cooks. That's what I called. That's what I called it too. <laughs> so yeah, we're just skimming the top. Okay, it's looking good. It's been a few hours. I'm gonna take just some white sugar. Let's do a tablespoon, okay? And then I'm gonna do a tablespoon of vinegar. We'll mix it around. And then we will, and then we will create our toppings. My favorite herb ever is dill. And we don't really need that much, so I'm just gonna like cut off the tops like that. And again, we're using the sawing motion to make little thin slivers. And then all you need after that is some sour cream. Okay, let's ladle her up. I'm gonna start with all the thick goodness. Mmm. You wanna remove these leaves because they don't taste very good let's get some of that soup i'm so excited and then we'll top it off with the best part let's see how it tastes get a good dollop Sour cream, put it right on top. Take a little sprinkle of dill. Mmm, can't wait to try. We're not okay. eating paint, right? <laughs> the soup expert is gonna tell you. I am a soup expert. I he love is. soup. I'd eat it for every meal if I could. He's a soup guy for sure. So. And um, I like to serve it with some sourdough bread to dip, which is always delicious. But let's just do it without the bread. Hold on, did we blow like we blow in, in the fluid art? Yeah. Well, what do I get? Get it? Get yeah, my yeah. joke? No. Okay, make it blue. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. That's actually really delicious, babe. I know. So it's like kind of sweet and like it has the balance of the. No, man. I'm, I'm like, sour? forget about this video. This is good. So yeah, I like the sweet really and, the, and the sour. And I like my chunky veggies. Chunky veggies. I told you. Try it. It works. And make sure, uh, chunky, but like, make sure they cook. She knows. She's learned. Do you know what? I also really like the um, sour cream on top of this. It cuts like the fat. Oh, oh it's hot. It's hot. Hot it's potato. Hot potato. This is really good. Oh, that was too much. My mouth burnt. But go. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Oh, dip. Let's dip. We got dip. All right, cheers. Cheers. I was just putting it away. Well done, mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Delicious, babe. Big two thumbs up. Let me know if you're gonna make two. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. I'm trying. Okay, to dip off. Yeah, dip it in. I'll give you a spoon. Okay, I'm dipping the bread in. Mmm, good. Mm. Thank you. Do you like? Here, have some soupy. Ready? 
Mm. Mm. You like it? Yeah. 